take a look at the description of the Jews. Were they white or were they black? Okay, let's test your knowledge of the true description of the Jews in general. Now, before you guess, here's your first clue. And it reads, "'Tis also a vulgar error that the Jews are all black, for this is only true of the Portuguese Jews, who marrying always among one another, beget children like themselves and consequently the swarthiness of their complexion is entailed upon their whole race even in the northern region and on to your second clue which reads as i attentively survey the jewish population on the streets of london i fancy i could perceive three different cast of features the first Jewish par excellence and never to be mistaken. Skipping ahead, it says, of the first form, I need say little to you, begging you merely to recollect that the contour is convex, the eyes long and fine and the outer angles running towards the temples, the brow and the nose apt to form a single convex line, the nose comparatively narrow at the base, the eyes consequently approaching each other, lips very full, mouth projecting, chin small, and the whole physiognomy, when swarthy or black, as it often is, has an African look. And on to our third and final clue, which reads, I have read of you, you are better than Jews, said he. Are Jews white like you? No, replied I, rather more like yourself. Very dark. Okay, now lock in your answers and let's check your answers based on our references. Per first hand accounts, are Jews white? Oh, that's the wrong answer. Per first hand accounts, are Jews black or brown? That's correct. Congratulations and thanks for playing. And now, let's finally TKO the description of Spanish and Portuguese brews. Right, left, right, left. Right, left, uppercut Right, left Right, left Do your right, left, uppercut According to the old references Spanish and Portuguese Jews Were described as black Swarthy and brown Right, left Right, left Do your right, left, uppercut They're even described as being as black As the Bicaris of Africa left, Who look like the modern day Negroes Today Right, left, uppercut. Right, left, right, left, do your right, left, uppercut. Right, left, right, left, do your right, left, uppercut. Uppercut. Right, left, do your right, left, uppercut. The shape of the ancient skulls of the children of Judah in Lachish are doli cosophallic, which is the shape of the modern day Negro skull. And next, ancient monuments of the children of Yehuda shows that Yehuda has woolly royal negro hair.
And then DNA analysis shows that Negroes have a single forefather, such as Yakov, unlike the Ashkenazi Jews of today. In fact, Ashkenaz is listed in the Bible as a descendant of Yafat, not Shem. Do you believe your Bible or man? And then finally, the term Semitic refers to a descendant of Shem or a descendant of someone who speaks an Afro-Asiatic language. Family, what does it mean when the word Afro is placed in front of a word? It means that they're Negro. Let's not be extra family. Family, this matches over. Right, left, right, left, do your right, left, uppercut. Right, left, right, left, do your right, left, uppercut. around the world by way of the transatlantic slave trade. And in the US, they're known as African Americans. However, have you ever taken the time to look up the word Negro in the Webster Dictionary? Well, let's take a closer look. The Webster Dictionary defines the word Negro as, in a quote, a member of a race of humankind native to Africa and classified according to physical features such as dark skin pigmentation. 
This is what we would expect to find for the definition of the word Negro. However, very few people scroll down to read the section located near the bottom of the page, which reads, First known use of Negro, 1555, in the meaning defined above. In other words, the first written record of the word Negro, meaning an African, started in the year 1555. In other words, the word Negro did not refer to a person of African descent until the year 1555. And with that in mind, the question would be, then who were the people called Negroes before 1555? You see, the transatlantic slave trade started in the year 1501 and the slaves on the first transatlantic slave ships were called Negroes. In fact, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel of Spain made it mandatory that only Negroes who were born in Spain and Portugal would be allowed to go to the Americas as slaves. In other words, these Negroes were Spanish and Portuguese natives. And so we need to know who was called Negroes in Spain and Portugal before 1555. Now in 1492, we see the Spanish Jews who fled into Portugal after being expelled from Spain. We see these Jews were called Negroes. As the following reference reads, and it reads, King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, which had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, or the Negro Portuguese as they are called and the Jews and Luango. Not only were these Spanish and Portuguese Jews called Negroes, they also took on the last name of Negro. For example, we see Jews in Portugal with the names Yaya Negro or Judah Negro and Dawid or David Negro. In addition to being called Negro and having last names of Negro, these Jews were described as black, dark complexion, brown, and swarthy in color. Some references compare the color of these Jews to the Bicaris of Africa, who looked like the so-called Negroes today. We also see the skulls of the Spanish Jews identified as doli cosephalic, which is the skull of the so-called Negro today. And finally, we see the word Negro associated with these Spanish and Portuguese Jews over and over again. For example, when these black Jews got sick, they called it the Black Plague. When these black Jews were persecuted by the Inquisition, the Inquisition Book of Laws was called the Black Book. And when the Spaniards denied the persecution of these black people, they referred to the persecution as a black legend. In other words, we see black, 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 and black when referring to these Jews. In fact, these Jews were called black for hundreds of years and it wasn't referred to as being anti-Semitic. You see, anti-Semitic is a term that didn't come into existence until the late 1800s. So the question would be, how can someone be anti-Semitic by calling a Jew black when the Brews had last names of Negro? Think about it. Now, while Judah was in captivity, Judah was fed from the mouth of the great red dragon and the daughter of Babylon. 
You see, the daughter of Babylon taught Judah his history, <laughs> a version of history which began with slavery and the west coast of Africa. This altered version of Judah's history began in 1619 with the arrival of Africans in English colonies on the east coast of what would later give rise to the United States of America. Judah's history before 1619 was simply omitted, covered over with new books containing a slightly modified history. To cover up this truth, modern day books occasionally omit key parts of quotes which describe the Jews as Negro or Black, often by using well-placed ellipses to hide the truth. We can even find modern books deleting entire paragraphs which describe the Jews as being placed on West and Central Africa in great numbers and then sold into slavery. We can also find modern books acknowledging the common understanding of Jews being black during the Middle Ages only to propose their blackness as being mm, metaphorical. Family. These are just some of the discrepancies found in contemporary books and reasons why you should go directly to the source and read it for yourselves. DNA of the Negro is arguably one of the most misunderstood DNA stories on earth. You see, traditional DNA analysis rightfully trace so-called Negro DNA back to Africa. And these relationships are discovered by simply comparing present-day African American DNA with present-day African DNA. And as stated before, this analysis rightfully identifies our deep connection with our African brothers and sisters. However, there's one critical missing component in this type of DNA analysis, and it's called genetic bottleneck. A genetic bottleneck event occurs when a catastrophic event of such magnitude, of such destruction, that it wipes out or greatly reduces an entire population. In other words, the population gets purged. And the so-called Negro has gone through multiple purging events. These DNA impacting events could be an earthquake which levels an entire city. It could be a mega blast from a sleeping volcano, which obliterates all life within 100 square miles. Or in the case of the so-called Negro, it could be the transatlantic slave trade. Which 
which murdered and displaced millions of people around the world over hundreds of years. Or a genetic bottleneck event could be triggered by an expulsion edict or an inquisition which evicted and murdered hundreds of thousands of the house of Judah in Spain and Portugal. And so these major events, which caused hundreds of thousands of people to disappear from an entire region, subsequently changed the DNA profile of the surviving population. Most importantly, these genetic bottleneck events impact DNA matches which display on modern day DNA reports. For example, so-called Negro DNA isn't found among certain modern day populations in great numbers. And it's because the Jews were expelled from those places. For example, today's DNA reports don't show so-called Negro DNA matches in and around present day Israel. However, if we instead compare so-called Negro DNA to ancient DNA extracted from archaeological sites in Israel and Lebanon, we find something unexpected. We find so-called Negro DNA buried in the ground of ancient Israel before the time of the Messiah. Beirut, Lebanon. These ancient archaeological dig sites date back as far as 800 BC. Here, archaeologists discovered the remains of multiple people who lived in ancient Lebanon. These ancient remains are assigned ID numbers and dates. In this particular archaeological site in Beirut, Lebanon, we examine one of the DNA samples collected from an ancient grave site. DNA from this ancient individual is labeled SFI-43. This particular individual lived approximately 567 to 404 BC. Researchers compare the ancient DNA remains of SFI-43 to modern-day Lebanese and Egyptian populations, as well as samples taken from a previous report. They discovered something shocking. They discovered the ancient Lebanese labeled SFI-43 was not closely related to modern Lebanese populations. Instead, SFI-43 showed close relationship to ancient Egyptian DNA samples. This is related in the following graph. Notice the dark green dots of the ancient Egyptian DNA are close to the light green dots of the SFI-43 ancient Lebanese DNA samples. The same findings were illustrated in yet another graph. Now, in this particular graph, related or shared DNA between samples is displayed as red marks. Now, notice SFI-43 shows red related marks when compared to the ancient Egyptian DNA samples. However, researchers didn't stop there. They added one additional group to compare their ancient Lebanese SFI-43 DNA to. They compared it to the E1B1A Yoruba DNA of West Africa, and they were surprised to see that it was a perfect match.
Negroes in Israel before the time of the Messiah. And it's not like we're just finding one person in these ancient sites. In research reports, we find the DNA of our African American queens listed as L0 and L3. That's the DNA of Negroes. And it can only mean one thing. We were there. Ancient DNA which matched the Yoruba of West Africa. What is it doing in Beirut, Lebanon in 567 BC? Family. The Bible tells us life is in the blood and they're finding your blood in these old bones of Israel. <laughs> 